Hello, and welcome to another edition of Aircraft Post Rousseau Report. I'm your host, Dennis Rousseau. And today, we're going to be talking about the Falcons. Not that one. Try again. Thank you. Specifically, the iconic three-engine Falcon 50 and 50EX. And boy, does this aircraft have an interesting lineage. Residual values and technology unsurpassed. As mentioned, we're now including accidents specific to each make model. And wait until you see these. Arson, war, running off runways, which I'll get to in a minute. But first, a bit of history. Dassault Aviation has been building fighter jets, such as the uh, Rafale and Mirage, for over 50 years. And in this segment of aviation, these high-powered aircraft have amazing supercritical wings to maneuver at speeds in excess of 1.5 Mach. Approach speeds less than 120 knots. Landing ground run of 1,500 feet. That's how it took this technology and applied it to business jets. The first recipient was the Falcon 20, which made its first flight in 1963 and started the Falcon business jet line. And as you can see, the aircraft was versatile, used for executive transportation, maritime patrol, cargo. It even carried sensors and missiles, thanks to the British. By using a supercritical wing gleaned from Dassault's fighters, there's only so much room for fuel. And as business aviation grew, buyers were clamoring for more range, improved safety. So Dassault took the fuselage of the Falcon 20, designed a new wing and empennage, added a third engine, and in 1979, the first Falcon 50 entered service. At a price point new, $7 million. The one shown here is actually a 1981 year model, 40 years old, 14,000 hours, and still flying. Before we move on, look at the downward angle of the horizontal stabilizer in the wing. It's really one beautiful design. The wing was fitted with high lift devices, inboard, outboard, flaps, slats, air brakes, truly a super critical wing and the first used on a business jet. The Falcon 50 received FAA type certification in March 79, certified for 12 passengers and 49,000 feet altitudes. Typical cruise was 0.8 Mach with an MMO of 0.86. It held 2,300 gallons of fuel in three wing and fuselage tanks, giving it a range of just under 3,000 miles. It had a pressurized cabin of only 6,000 feet at flight level 410, and actually had an optional service bulletin allowing it to land on unimproved runways. The fuselage was unique in that the forward cabin had a height of 5 foot 9 inches and the aft cabin 5 feet 4 inches, which is a result of the wing box and third engine. If you look at the S-duct, most people think the engine is mounted on the top front, when in fact it's mounted at the tail cone. And these early Falcon 50s were powered by Garrett's TF731-3 engines. From a topographical view, we can see the general layout of the 16-foot, 1-inch cabin. Four singles in a club arrangement forward, and two singles opposite a three-place divan. All ensconced within a 16-foot, 1-inch cabin that I'll show you how we arrive at that, next, at that length next. The Falcon 50 has an aft lab and forward galley with three closets in the vestibule. This drawing is an actual completion drawing that's used for the interior layout, and as you can see, all furniture is on a level plane, however the floor, no pun intended by the way, is on a level plane. However, the floor slopes from 5'9 to 5'4 in the aft cabin. Now the way we get actual cabin lengths is by flight stations. All aircraft are measured from the nose to the tail in inches, called flight station. And we measure from the forward cabin bulkhead flight station to just forward of the lav door, which yields cabin length. Once again, buyer beware. Most OEMs calculate cabin length from just behind the cockpit door to the aft pressure bulkhead, which is a bit misleading due to the fact that we don't sit in the lav or galley. So at Aircraft Post, we provide detailed lengths throughout the aircraft. As uh, all aircraft in the early 80s, the first 142 Falcon 50s had the old steam gauges and GNS Omega nav systems. Then in 1986, Falcon installed the early generation EFIS consisting of four CRTs and a radar on the front panel. Similar to all OEMs, they introduce improvements over the production run and sometimes offer them as an upgrade or rebrand the aircraft into the next model. In 1996, Falcon rebranded the 50, the 50EX, replaced the EFIS 86 with Collins Proline 4 that was also used in the G200, Falcon 2000 and Lear 60, 
and installed upgraded 731-40 engines that offered more thrust and a longer time between overhaul. As CRTs reached obsolescence, OEMs replaced them with LCDs in the cockpit, and Falcon offered operators the opportunity to retrofit their cockpits to the Collins ProLine 21 with four LCDs that provided a higher tech cockpit with greater functionality and less clutter. This retrofit was available for around $700,000. So with these changes, how do you tell the difference between the 50 and 50EX? Look in the cockpit. But wait. If the early Falcon 50s have the upgraded ProLine 21, uh, bottom line, it's damn difficult, if not impossible. Let's take a tour of the inside. And this is where brilliant designers are worth every penny. We're taking a very small space and trying to be all things to all buyers. We have a few options just after the cockpit. We can install one, a fixed side facing jump seat, or we can build a closet and store the jump seat inside. Or we can have a dedicated closet on the right hand side and a jump seat that stows in the left hand closet and pulls out when needed. Or you thought it was finished, huh? We can have an extended galley or a galley with a closet or better yet, Let's just throw a whoopee cushion in the closet and be done with it. As we enter the cabin, the upsloping floor becomes apparent about midway down the aisle. The forward club is very accommodating for four passengers, and Esso prides themselves on outfitting, and rightfully so. Their craftsmanship is top-notch. The aft cabin offers a couple of options. The photo on the left depicts the standard layout, or buyers can opt for dual divans, or four singles, four and aft. The aft lab is spacious, has an electric flushing toilet, and offers plenty of room to conduct your business. And as large as the external baggage compartment seems, it comes in at 90 cubic feet, which is just slightly under the competition. But for an aircraft that has an average stage length of 1.5 hours, I think it'll hold everyone's luggage. And as you can see, steps are integrated into the door, which makes for easy loading and unloading. Now let's get away from the mainstream and look at a couple of anomalies. As the aircraft uh, was designed and built in France, European buyers of early Falcon 50s did not want the crew in their space. So Dassault designed the aircraft to have a forward galley and forward lav, and turned the aftmost cabin into a salon, featuring a wraparound divan, which I must say, having flown on such an aircraft, it's pretty nice. But boy, is the forward lav tiny and cumbersome to use. Whew. You unlatch the door, then it has a catch on the forward bulkhead to cordon off the cabin. Now you're ready to do your business, right? Not yet. What about the crew? Well, there's a curtain. But if you do the dirty, that front office is going to reap the benefits, if you know what I mean. Thankfully, there were only a few made, and most have been converted back to an aft lav. I guess as people get taller and bigger, Aircraft cabins that used to be roomy are not so roomy anymore. And one buyer removed the two aft facing seats in the forward cabin, installed mini credenzas and oversized pull out tables just so they could fit. And just as the uh, Falcon uh, 20 was very versatile, so is the 50. It's been used uh, to carry emergency litters and medical tables. As well, the aircraft is used for maritime patrol one major mod that's come available in the last 10 plus years are five and a half foot Aviation Partners winglets that install run in the neighborhood of $750,000. But you get better time to climb performance, lower fuel burns, and additional range. Anywhere in North America, nonstop. Northern third of South America, nonstop. New York to London, nonstop. So, who are the major competitors in class to the Falcon 50 EX? The Citation Sovereign, G200. All three have two zone cabins, plus or minus 3,000 mile range. The 50 EX has a slightly higher fuel burn, but a higher operating ceiling, and as mentioned, it has the least baggage volume of the three. There are five 50 EXs on the current market with an average market time of 107 days and an absorption rate of only five months. As prices range from 2.9 for a 2,000 year model and 5,900 hours total time to a high of 3.9 million for a 1999 year model with 8,000 hours total time. There have been six sales in the last six months. 
prices ranging from 3 to 4.2 million, in an average market time of 11 days. From a value retention perspective, a 21-year-old Falcon 50 EX that had a price point new of 18 million is now selling for 3.6. I'd like to point out that prior to every economic bust as an industry, we've had a run-up in pre-owned pricing, and 2021 seems to be unfolding similar to 2007 and 2008. But not as drastic. Time will tell. But I can say this. Something does not seem right. Lastly, accidents. The one on the top left took place in 2014 and was parked on a hangar in Ukraine, destroyed in heavy fighting at the airport. Also in 2014, the accident top right took place in Russia when a 50 was cleared for takeoff in foggy conditions and impacted a snowplow that had entered the runway without permission. The one on the bottom left happened in South Carolina in 2018. The aircraft landed fine, deployed its center thrust reverser, but did not decelerate, and off the end of the runway it went, impacting the fence. First responders reported all three engines were operating at full power 20 minutes after the incident, with one engine running for 40 minutes. Four on board, two fatal. The one on the bottom right, which looks horrible, was arson. The perimeter fence was cut at Toronto Airport, and a gas can was found at the bottom of the steps. One of the most catastrophic was in 1994, when the president of Rwanda was flying to Kigali, and conspirators tracked the flight path from the time it left Dar es Salaam. They fired two SAMs, and one missile hit the wing and fuselage, causing the plane to crash into the grounds, Dig this, of the President's Kanambi residence. True story. Now, let's get down our Falcon 50X, grab a cow, and jump over the moon. For Aircraft Post, Rousseau Report, I'm Dennis Rousseau. Thank you for viewing. Have a great day.